In mixing milk, Farmer John is going to have three different buckets containing milk from three different cows. So Farmer John is going to pour a couple pours in a cyclic fashion for a total of 100 operations. And we want to tell Farmer John how much milk will be in each bucket after he finishes all of his pours. So let's go look at the algorithm for this question. In order to solve this question, we're going to simulate the 100 pours. For every pour we do, the amount is either the current amount in the first bucket pouring or the amount of capacity left in the second bucket. So what this means is if we were pouring from bucket one to bucket two, in this case, we're going to look at two numbers. First is the amount of milk currently in bucket one, which is three. And second is the amount of capacity left in bucket two, which is seven. Whichever one of these numbers is smaller is going to be the amount we transfer. And what that basically means is if there's more milk than capacity, then we're only going to give the amount in the capacity. If there is less milk than capacity, then we're just going to give the amount of milk. So if we simulate a couple of the pores in this example, we're going to get three, four, five, and let's say we're going to pour from one to two, that would be zero, seven, five. We're going to pour from two to three, then from three to one. And then we're gonna pour from three to one. From three to one, we notice there is more milk than there is capacity, so we're only going to pour the amount of capacity. We'll get 10, zero, two. And then we could keep going, we get zero, 10, 2, and so on and so forth. So let's go look at the code for this question. I'm going to show a couple different languages for the implementation of this code. First, I'm going to start with C++. If you use Java or some other language, skip ahead later on because the codes are pretty similar, just in different languages. For the C++ aspect, we're going to create a couple variables. I'm going to have C and M as our capacity and our milk. I'm going to read in the input from 0 to 3, and we're just going to have our capacity in milk, and then we're just going to loop through all 100 pours. For each of these pours, I'm going to run a pour function, and depending on i mod 3, which is just going to give us the remainder of i mod 3, and that's just going to tell us which pour we're on from 1 to 2, or to 2 to 3, or to 3 to 1. And then we're going to have another value, 2, which is going to be i plus 1 mod 3. So what these will basically do is they'll tell us which bucket we're pouring from and which bucket we're pouring to. Our pour function is going to be relatively simple. Since using this, we've inputted our from and to buckets, we're going to create a value called amount. And amount is going to be the minimum of the milk from the front, so the amount of milk we could pour in, or the capacity left in the current bucket we're pouring to. So that's the total capacity minus the current milk in the bucket, which is going to tell us the amount of capacity we have left in the bucket. And the amount we transfer is just going to be the smaller value of the two. And we're just going to subtract that value from the from and then add it to the two. At the very end, after doing all 100 pours, we're just going to output the amount of milk in each bucket. And that's the end of our program. For the Java code in this program, we're going to start by reading in the input. And we're going to do this with two main arrays. We're going to have two ints, one C and one M. And so we're going to read these in. And then we're just going to create a function called pour. And for this function, we're going to basically calculate the amount that we're going to be pouring. And so we're going to read in two arguments. First is the bucket we're pouring from, and that's just going to be the value of i mod 3. And then the bucket we're pouring to, which is i plus 1 mod 3. This will effectively create either 1 and 2, 2 and 3, 3 and 1, etc. based off of i. And this way we can keep our cycles organized. For our pour function, the amount we pour is going to be the minimum of the total amount of milk 
in the current bucket we're pouring from, and the amount of capacity left in the next bucket. So we're going to find the capacity by finding the total capacity minus the amount of milk currently in the bucket, and we're going to transfer that amount accordingly. After we do 100 pours, we're going to just print the amount left in the three buckets. And at the very end, we'll just close our file. And that's the end of our program.